Hello, good afternoon. This is the All 24 News and to the headlines. Sudan's ousted Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdouk is set to resistance after being placed under house arrest during military coup last month. After a newly attack on unarmed Palestinians, all the gates of the Al-Aqsa Mosque has been closed by all Zionist forces. Polish Prime Minister, we have closed all checkpoints with Belarusians and we may do the same with the rest. Hello again and welcome. Addis Ababa is at risk of falling to rebel forces. Its population has been urged to defend itself and larger humanitarian crisis loom, with nearly half a million Ethiopians facing starvation. More to be clarified in this report. Ethiopian military, one of the most powerful on the African continent and respected by the United States, recently faced heavy losses on the front lines by forcing the government to take the extraordinary step of inviting ordinary citizens to join the war. Tigray People's Liberation Front spokesman Gita Shirida tweeted that the army sent a drone to attack a residential area of Mekel around 1 a.m. A year into a conflict between government forces and the Tigray People's Liberation Front, Ethiopia has seen thousands of lives lost and more than a million people displaced. A dispute last year between Addis Ababa and the Tigray People's Liberation Front about the postponement of national elections due to the coronavirus pandemic led to the current violence. Tigray went ahead with regional elections against the wishes of the national government prompting clashes that have been ongoing since November 2020. The Tigray People's Liberation Front controlled Ethiopia for 25 years before being forced into opposition when Abiy Ahmed was elected prime minister in 2018, after which they consolidated their power base in Tigray. Sudanese Army Chief Abdel Fattah al-Burhan and Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdouk reached an agreement that includes that the latter returns to the presidency of the Sudanese government and to release all civilian leaders detained since the military coup last month. More to be clarified in this report. Developments that may change the Sudanese scene, a crucial meeting took place between the president of the Sudanese Sovereignty Council, Abdul Fattah al-Burhan, and the ousted Prime Minister, Abdullah Hamdouk, during which they reached an agreement to resolve the current political crisis. According to media reports, the United National Initiative in Sudan announced the approval of Abdullah Hamdouk's return as Prime Minister during the transitional period, in parallel with calls for demonstrations in rejection of the decisions previously taken by the Sudanese Army Chief Abdul Fattah al-Burhan. The agreement, according to the statement of the initiative, which includes academics, journalists and politicians, includes the release of all political detainees, the completion of consultations with political forces, with the exception of the National Congress Party, in addition to continuing the procedures for constitutional, legal and political consensus that govern the transitional period. This comes at a time when the Central Council of the Forces of Freedom and Change announced its adherence to reject negotiations and partnership with those it described as revolutionaries. The Sudanese Professionals Association, which played an essential role during the uprising that led to the overthrow of Omar al-Bashir in April 2019, also asked the Sudanese to continue pressing for the return of the city, calling for a number of gatherings throughout the week, including a massive million demonstration on Sunday. In another story, it seems that the Libyan election taking place on the 24th of December continues to experience an intense struggle for power with a high number of candidates, rising up to 30 for which faced with the public opinion refusal to hold election that can neglect demands of the people. Islam Seed on what follow. Number of candidates for Libyan presidential elections on December 24th has risen to 30 as of Saturday evening submitted their nomination papers to the Libyan High Electoral Commission. Despite the fact that the High Electoral Commission has continued to accept presidential and parliamentary candidates for elections, wave of refusal to hold elections in according with the laws of the House of Representatives adopted by the Commission for the Holding of Elections continues. As a number of high-ranking officials in Jadu, 
Far West Libya emphasize on their refusal to hold votes in line with the electoral laws themselves and have called for them to be held in step with an agreed constitutional rule. During the evening of Friday and Saturday, in the capital Tripoli in Masrata, dozens of protesters gathered in protest against the electoral laws that allowed the elections of criminals and murderers, as the statement of demonstrators in the city of Masrata described, namely Saif al-Din Gaddafi and Khalifa Haftar, as well as all those who have committed crimes against Libyans. The continuation of denial's positions coincided with the new statements by the House of Representatives spokesman Akila Sala, denying that the electoral laws were detailed for a person and that they had been passed by the deputies to be abstract public and not to inspect anyone. He added that there is no room for electoral laws to be amended. In his turn, Abdul Hamid Dabiba, the actual government president, warned against preparing electoral laws which he considered it was the way to deprive citizens of their choice of leadership and the right to self-determination. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that Washington is highly focused on supporting the efforts of the United Nations envoy to Western Sahara Sanford the Minister and the United Nations process to find permanent situation. U.S. State Department on its website indicated that the new U.N. envoy to Western Sahara came after a long vacancy and position and stressed that the focus on the United States of America today is to move forward with the UN process to find solution between all parties. The occupying Zionist forces opened fire on two Palestinians who allegedly planned a shooting attack. One of the Palestinians was killed while the other managed to flee. The shooting attack injured seven members of the at Zionist police and it took place in Kutz Old City near Chain Gate morning where the Zionist forces have closed all the gates of Al-Aqsa Mosque. According to reports, one of the injured is in the critical condition as follows. <clears throat> The Chinese foreign minister announced today, Sunday, that Beijing has downground its diplomatic relations with Lithuania against the opening of a representative office of Taiwan in the capital. Ministers, more details in this paper with Hussam Perkan. The Chinese foreign ministry announced today, Sunday, that China has officially downgraded its diplomatic relations with Lithuania to a level of charge d'affaires in protest against Taiwan's opening of an embassy in Vilnius. In a press conference, Chao Lijian, the Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson, said that Lithuania flagrantly violates the One China principle and that China will take all necessary measures to defend national sovereignty and territorial integrity. This act creates the false impression of One China, One Taiwan in the world, flagrantly violates the One China principle and re-announces the political commitment made by Lithuania in the communique on the establishment of diplomatic relations with the People's Republic of China. It undermines China's sovereignty and territorial integrity and grossly interferes in China's internal affairs. The Chinese government expresses strong protest over and firm objection to this extremely egregious act and will take all necessary measures to defend national sovereignty and territorial integrity. The United States, for its part, responded, rejecting any attempts by other countries to interfere in Lithuania's relations with Taiwan, in a news conference by U.S. and their Secretary of State, Yus Razia, in Vilnius. We reaffirm our support for our valued NATO ally and the EU partner Lithuania. Uh, we reject attempts by other countries to interfere in Lithuania's sovereign decision to deepen cooperation uh, with Taiwan. This rise in tensions comes after Taipei announced Thursday that he had opened an official office in Vilnius, using the name Taiwan, disregarding the strong opposition of China that rejects any use of this name, considering Taiwan part of its territory. Who's our Sunday destination for Venezuelans as local and regional election is taking place in the South American country? 3,000 state governors, mayors and city councillors are to be chosen. The last presidential and parliamental election was boycotted by the opposition as they are back to likely vote again as the government of the current president Nicolas Maduro. And this election is set for the imperialty of the Electoral Commission. European Union election observes will be present at around 1,000 of 14,000 voting centers. 
Within the Belarusian-Poland emergency borders updates, Poland does not rule out the possibility of closing the borders with Belarus over migration crisis. Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki is a meeting with uh, Estonian Prime Minister Kajala Kalas said today, Sunday, currently Poland has closed only the Kozanik checkpoint, but they may also close the other points. Steps are being considered in the form of increasingly serious economic sanctions, including the closure of Belarusian-Polish border on the Polish side. According to a certain rule of the escalation letter, we want to give Lukashenko a chance to go back and bring the migrants back to their countries of origin. First, we close one passage in Koznica, but we may close the rest. The Polish Prime Minister emphasized that has a violent video in which Belarusian officials tell Iraqi and Middle Eastern immigrants how to attack Polish officials with a knife. We have a very drastic video in which Belarusian officials instruct Iraqi and Middle Eastern migrants how to attack Polish officials with knife. This means that the scenarios on the Belarusian side can be very drastic. The activities of Belarusian services and officials may lead to a far reach and escalation of activities. We're also ready to use this escalation letter, closing subsequent crossings, closing transit and trade opportunities in order to exert economic pressure on the Lukashenko regime. Firefighters and doctors walk out on a strike after the French overseas territory of Guadalupe has been put under curfew after five days of civil unrest and violence. The basis of an unrest is due to government-imposed COVID-19 protocols that have seen barriers on industries. Marwa reports. Alexandre Schatz's office said on Twitter, in light of the social unrest and acts of vandalism, the prefect of Guadalupe has decided to impose a curfew. Trade unions launched an indefinite strike on Monday. The protest of compulsory vaccinations of health workers against COVID-19 and health pass requirements after Guadeloupe's prefect Alexandre Rochat, who represents the government at the Caribbean archipelago, said the nightly curfew would run from 6 p.m. to 5 a.m. The sale of gas in jerry cans would also be forbidden, he added. Protesters have tortured cars and erected makeshift barriers across streets. Video on social media showed police changing protesting firefighters who used fire hoses to try and repel the officers and plumes of smoke raising over neighborhoods. France will be sending over 200 police to the island after the demonstration turned violent, with barricades being turned over and fires being set, including cars which could lead to explosive dangerous consequences. In a joint statement made by French Interior Minister Gérald Dermanon and Overseas Minister Sébastien Lecornu, both officials agreed and stated that they strongly condemned the violence and has taken place in the last few hours in Guadeloupe. In the same line of thoughts, riots and demonstration in Guadeloupe turned aggressive after the last restriction of COVID-19 pandemic taken by European governments. Complications became more explicit as the French government is preparing for sending social forces as reinforcement for police forces on the site. New rights broke out in the Netherlands against the Dutch government's anti-coronavirus efforts, and again with protesters throwing stones and holding fireworks at the police in The Hague. Five officers were injured and more than seven people were arrested. The, the rational happened a day after police in Rotterdam opened fire on protesters during a protest over COVID-19 limitations in Rotterdam. At least three individuals were injured and 51 people were arrested. It is worth mentioning that it was one of the most violent outbreaks in the Netherlands since coronavirus restrictions were implemented last year. The pandemic situation in Europe is worsening after the last decision of government on new restriction for unvaccinated. This part of citizens showed the wrath and refusal over limitation as many protests erupted in different parts of the continent. More to be clarified, Usama Yeti. At a time when Europe is expected to embrace holiday festivities, the continent has become the epicenter of COVID-19 pandemic. 
as the number of cases soared to a record rate. After two years of severe restrictions on the European nation, the infection spiked again at a point that the population is split into two parts, vaccinated and non-vaccinated citizens. Europe healthcare systems have recently limited choices for unvaccinated people in the hope of reducing case rate, and some governments went further, as Austria imposed vaccination on citizens, and many other European governments are heading to the same decision, including Slovakia, Germany and Greece. The world has been through similar mandatory vaccinations for numerous times in human history. However, nations this time have made it more difficult and challenging for governments, and showed clearly their refusal to the new state limitations. Tens of thousands of protesters gathered in rage in various regions of Europe, including Vienna and Austria, Italy, Croatia, Northern Ireland and the Netherlands, for refusing the partial lockdown restrictions on Saturday. Protesters including riot groups and freedom parties threw bottles and cans on police officers, who then used pepper spray to disperse the furious crowds. In some regions, riots went more violent, as some protesters blocked the roads and set cars on fire. Schallenberg apologized to all vaccinated people, explaining that they had to suffer under the new restrictions and that is not the fairest decision, while some riot activists stated that individual riots are being trampled. COVID-19 cases are in continual soar, but the new restrictions are pitting the people against the people and who knows what the next step for all parts will be, as lives matter and individual rights should be taken into consideration. According to Rome Agency Press, the United Nations Migration Agency said 75 migrants drowned in the Mediterranean Sea north of the Libya early this week, where they attempt to reach Italy by boat. The Italian Coast Guard rescued more than 420 migrants, including dozens of minors, from boats in difficulty in the Mediterranean Sea. Also, a Coast Guard statement said 70 people were brought safely by one of the motorboats to the tiny Italian island of Limpudusa, south of Sicily. A different Coast Guard vessel was headed to the Porto of Impoludix last night in Sicily with more than 350 migrants abroad after they were plucked to safety from a foundering fishing boat 70 miles from the Sicilian coast. The statement said among them were more than 40 minors. A multitasking smart robot was made in Algeria among the several factionalists that intervention offers are drilling, sending details about the problem deeply from under the soil. An invention which shows the progressive Algerian inventors are making in the field of artificial intelligence. Nabil reports. A multitasking robot directed to install and pursue the exploitation of gas pipelines. The robot is smart to an extent that it can also repair damages without any single human intervention. We are presenting the Industry 4.0 through different products. One of the products is a robot that we use for the pipeline inspection so we can get the data in real time plus an image in real time so we can. The philosophy of such product is not to send people to a risky area. You send the robot, you bring the data, you take decision. The robot identifies gas leak points, repair disruptions, even those discovered deeply underground. Qualities that give flexibility and speed for local communities to immediately intervene with less efforts and less expenses. We made this robot to tell the world that we also can invent robots. We're capable to make robots. The problem is not only with emissions. Take the example of municipalities' interventions team. Whenever they have a drill emission, they feel unable to detect the real problem. A small robot like this one sends very exact details about the distance and the nature of the problem. More than that, the robot sends solutions for the problem located underground. Drilling can be avoided and the emission can be accomplished much easier. An Algerian smart robot made with Algerian hands competes countries that made long steps in the robotic field. An invention that will lessen risks for energy companies, minimize expenses and will help manage repair deadlines. 
ended up with some light news about the British royal family, where the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Middleton, has streamed social media and royal family fans with her new hairstyle. Look at royal variety performance, Nadia Kasmiripos. The Duchess of Cambridge wowed royal fans when she arrived at the Royal Variety Performance alongside husband Prince William Thursday night with her gorgeous hair transformation. Dazzling in a custom-made Jenny Packham gown, which she previously wore to a reception hosted by the British High Commissioner to Pakistan in 2019, Kate's glamorous evening look was enhanced by her brand new hairdo. She wore her long brunette locks, swept over one shoulder, ditching her trademark bouncy blow-dry in favor of natural tangled curls. Duchess Kate's new hairstyle marks a huge change in her public image. Her look has been achieved using a smaller curling iron with the emphasis on creating more volume and a more natural look. Kate's decision to change up her hair look gave her more polished image and makes her more authentic in the eyes of royal fans. And after all, Kate is right on trend for the autumn and winter season. And before we wrap up our news edition, let's have a reminder for our main stories. Sudan's Austrian Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdouk is to be reinstated after being placed under house arrest during military call last month. After a newly attack on unarmed Palestinians, all the gates of Al Aqsa Al Mosque has been closed by the Zionist forces. Polish Prime Minister, we have closed a checkpoint with Belarusian and we may do the same with the rest. That's all what we have for now. Stay tuned to our main news edition at 6. Peace.